So, hey, it's Hanukkah. It is going to be night number six, six. And I want to share some thoughts. It's kind of a collection of thoughts I heard about this beautiful holiday from a few different rabbis, a few different sources woven together for you to enjoy if, if it's your cup of tea. So it's like this. Hanukkah is the light of, of the festival of lights, of illumination. And Rabbi David Aaron in his, in his book on holidays, says that a person on this holiday, we're being asked to not look at what light lights up. In other words, right now there's a lamp behind me and it's lighting up the room. You can see the pictures, you can see the ground, you can see whatever you can see me. That's what is being illuminated. But instead on this holiday, we are asked not to look at what's illuminated, but rather the illuminating itself. The fact that there's a process called illumination. There's a process called spiritual light shining in the world. And that's amazing. And that's wonderful. Now, there's an amazing midrash that one of my rabbis, Rabbi Balafia, told us this week. And, you know, I haven't seen it, but it sounds really cool. That basically, that Yaakov, Jacob, he went back across the river and fought with the angel of Esau, Esau. To get these special small jars. What was in this small jar? Oil. What was this oil? Midrash says it was oil that he used that was magical, had miraculous powers that lasted for 14 years straight, which is amazing. That's the Lushan of Koach, by the way, and Nisayon, but that's for another time. Is it 14 years straight in the Shiva Shem Ve'ever? And, and, and that he could learn all day and all night. That's, that's what's taught. And it never went out. It was very sacred to him. He's willing to fight to the death with this angel force. Like, who wins angels? You know what I mean? Like, they, don't play, they don't play fair. The guy hit him in the leg, and he still kept going. And he won. And he got a new identity and a new name, and he elevated himself to a new level. And, the, there, and, and the, I think it's Tosafos is saying on the Midrash that, hey, this is what we are um, this is what happened in the base of Migdash when they found one jar. According to this perspective, maybe it was that oil. And so when it lasted for eight days, it didn't need to last for eight days. It could have lasted for 40 days, 80 days, a thousand days. It wasn't, oh, it barely lasts. It is that it will for sure last forever. It lasts as long as it's needed. And this is interesting because it's like Rabbi Tat says that, the letters of, of uh, Hashem is the same as Neshama, is the same as Mishnah and Shmona. So we'll get to that in a minute. But pause, that's amazing. Also, that I read once Rabbi Friedman's um, YouTube lecture. I haven't really listened to most of it, but the title was just so um, amazing that what I did was I just listened to the title over and over, which is The Soul Never Dies and the Body Never Lived which is the idea that our body never really lives and our soul never dies. So just like this magic oil, which has the same numerology or letters, the four letters of, of uh, soul, the, the soul and the oil, like the oil lasts forever and our soul lasts forever. We don't always think that or experience that. And our body does die and, and goes back in the ground. And so I read that um, by Hanukkah, the great, battle is on an existential level, almost philosophical. The Greeks believed in, um, and this was also in, in, in Rabbi David Aaron's book, the Greeks believed in the power of nature and that's all there is. So the body, it dies and that's it. And, and the Jews stand for soul. They don't know the body is in, illuminated, lit up and enlivened by soul. So without soul, you don't, you don't, the body just goes like a puppet who it has no life force. And actually the truth is in Chinese medicine and in Indian medicine and in all sorts, everybody agrees there's a life force in the body. They call it prana, chi, nefesh. Uh, uh, we call it uh, nefesh or chius. So, okay. But Western industrial scientific revolution says, no, if we can't measure it, it doesn't exist which is problematic in many ways, in my opinion. Oh, you decide. So therefore, Hanukkah is really about 
re-establishing and reminding ourselves that there's a power of illumination, which is the power of our soul, which is the power from beyond, which is miracles. Miracles is this idea of something that breaks through nature. It breaks through the construct and the, the, the structure of the natural world and, and shows us that there's something much more happening beyond. And I like to invite us all. Let's go back. So we said the letters of Nishama, soul, Mishnah, to study the holy uh, word of God, Hashemin, and um, Shmona, eight days. So eight represents one beyond. Seven is the, is the number of natural. Everything is in the natural world is seven. Seven colors of the rainbow, seven notes of the, of the major scale, seven everything. And related to that, seven colors of the rainbow. Do you know in the in the physical world, I believe if you if you um, with light, if you put all the colors of light together, you get white, I believe. And in the physical world, if you put all the colors together, you get black, which is interesting, but amazing. So many amazing ideas, and so we see that all these concepts are really one. And we'll save that for more of another time. But the main thing is that our soul can last forever. I thought of this primarily because I have a client a coach, a coachee who started a gratitude practice. And I, I forget the exact number now, but I think he's up to 794 days straight of gratitude practice. And I thought to myself, this gratitude that he's doing is like oil that never goes out. It keeps birthing itself. It keeps giving of itself that it in of itself keeps generating more of itself. A lot of things get used up, but the holiest things keep generating themselves. Like the way a candle pass to another candle it is generating more of itself and so too is gratitude practices producing and birthing more and more gratitude and hanukkah is about gratitude so power to him he inspired me and he's an amazing person and he should be strengthened on his gratitude practice he should get to two thousand five thousand gratitude days in a row i would love to get to 20 gratitude days in a row you know I mean, I guess they do sort of, but not really, like not the way he's talking about. This is amazing. All right. That was a whirlwind of ideas. I hope you enjoyed it and have a wonderful Hanukkah, Hanukkah.